Hi, I'm Roberto Martinez and you're watching Toffee TV. Welcome back to Toffee TV with me, Ped and Baz. We're here to talk about another disappointing defeat this time in the Capital One Cup to Swansea at the Liberty Stadium. And I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. It's like, yeah, you sound like a parent there, yeah. you know that. You've done I was I was wrong. really angry on Sunday and now I'm just really disappointed. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. I don't know what I'm feeling at the moment. I can't put it into words. I think one compound with the other. Yeah, I think pretty if, much so. I think if we'd have won Sunday, we'd have all... We never like to lose any game. No. And I hate Everton losing pre-season friendly. So, cup competitions. I, th I think this this competition, we're either hexed in it, we're either jinxed because we, we, we're out of it. We, we, I think we've been we've been through twice in the last 27 years, past the last 16, which is a terrifying Incredible. stat really, isn't it? Um, and I think it's one, especially with getting the bye, it was another game down. You only had to win five and you've won a trophy. And we haven't won a trophy for it'll be twenty years when the stuff's mm. handed out. So that kind of disappointment. And you know that it's gonna be someone like Doncaster again. <laughs> Coventry in the final or something. Yeah. It, it, you know, he made the changes. I fully understand why he made the changes. You know, he brought Oviedo back in, fantastic to see him back in there. Give Luke Garber to go at left back, fully understand that. Played Tony Ibert. Not fully understanding why he done that. Bessich, Gibson, that's all great. I fully understand that. But what I don't understand is, why did he leave Morales out and Naismith on Sunday if they weren't going to be re involved in this game? It, that to me just doesn't make any sense. Surely those two could have started Sunday and had a week's rest before the Mayside derby. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, the, just quickly jumping back to Sunday, I think the change is the fourth change of Coleman. And maybe one other would have been mm. sufficient. I think Naismith should have started. I think Morales should have started on Sunday. I don't think there's any kind mm. of question about that. And given the team he picked last night, it does make you look back and scratch your head a bit and go, is he just not sure what the best way to manage them? Yeah. You know, manage their fitness at the moment. I don't know. I don't know whether he's just thought there's no point in putting them in, you know, when you mm. want to give other players games. And You can look, Hibbert's part of the squad, so we, you can understand why he's played as a right back. You know, mm. for me, the bigger question. No, but go on, keep going. He's got to fill the squad, hasn't he? He's got to give yeah. the squad games. Now, if you're a player on the on the books, you want games, yeah. okay? But the bits where I found really puzzling was distant because he played Sunday, so I don't understand why he played last night. Tim Howard, yeah, I don't understand that. He, a, he's playing garbage at the moment. He's absolutely he's minging every shot at him. Is going in. So it might have done him okay to give him a week out of the team and just let him train and focus. Yeah. You know, uh, bringing Leon Osman on, you know, was a Ten bit of a strange on when Coney's on. The, you know, so there's just a couple of things within what he done that I don't mm. don't fully understand. I thought it would have been a perfect opportunity last night to play Joel. Yeah. You know, and look, people give Joel a lot of stick, but if he hasn't made half the mistakes, a quarter of the mistakes Howard's made. So I think people are on his back too soon. Tyus Browning. Young lad. Well, that's you know. why I couldn't understand the Hibbert one though, because Tyus Browning's there. But he can play centre half. So why didn't he play centre half mm. with Alcaraz? We're we looking for a we've got a conundrum at centre half because we've got Alcaraz who we know won't be at the club next year. This stand won't be at the club next year. And Jack Yelk is thirty two. Yeah. We all I think everyone agrees John Stones is probably our number one centre half. So why not have a look at Tyus Browning in that role as well last night? Mm. You know, you're up against it wasn't Bony, he was up against. Yeah, because it was a strange one, because it was all almost like you're not going for it because of you've made that many changes. And he almost said that in the press conference afterwards by saying, well, I'm, I was here just to look at players more mm. than anything else. So if that's mm. the case, then go all out and play. Or, or was there a, almost an idea that he was trying to, maybe not confirming whether the likes of Tony Hibbert were past it, but sort of having to, he, he sort of put it in there and thought, well, I need to see him in this game, whether to see whether he's going to play in bigger games, maybe? Maybe, maybe. As a professional footballer, you want games, don't you? And if that, rightly or wrongly, it looked as though he's looked at that cup and thought, not you know, yeah. this team is good enough to match what Swansea are putting out. But, you know, what if it backfires? We've got the yeah. Europa League this year to worry about. And again, I think that... I don't think anyone's got any arguments with that. I think, you know, last night was... A lot of people were looking and going, well, it's just the League Cup. I fully understand... But we look at the changes and think, well, maybe we've played, we've 
we need the changes, but we've played them at the wrong times. We go, as you say, we go back to Morales, we go back to Naismith, and then we look at those changes last night. I mean, the game itself, I thought we started pretty well. I thought we had the, kept the ball really well. And we never, we were never really a threat as such in that in that first period. But what was pretty evident was that Tony Hibbert was getting taken to the cleaners all the time. Down that down that side, and no it, one in front of him, no either, did he? No, which again is another factor of what we've been seeing most of the season. Just two plays in midfield, Bessage and Gibson, and everyone else is an attacking kind of player and not really supporting. Um, the ball's been put across the box, and it's an easy goal. Tim Howard again, should he have done better? Yeah, got a hand on it, got a full hand on it. He wasn't it's fingertips; it was a full hand. He should have saved. No question about it. I don't think it was the hardest such yeah. shot. So yeah. So we go in we go in at half time, one nil down. There's still plenty there to play for. Lukaku comes on. Arguably could have done better with his first chance in the first mini. He should have really hit the target for me. Good and same. if he'd hit the target, he could, probably would have scored and Everton are back in it. He didn't. Everton never really made another chance all night. No. The second goal. I really don't know. I just don't know what 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 is Sylvan Distan doing there? What what is he doing? Why didn't he just swing his foot at it? If he swings, someone say he did. Just, yeah. If he just swung a leg at it and it hits him and flies in the top corner, you can put it down to unlucky being mm. unlucky. But choosing to go all Andy Gray on us, like, you know, for no reason, yeah. and, and it ending up behind Tim Howard. And I mean, even. It looked there was a there was a massive element of good fortune. It's a it's a sh- cross shot from Shelby. This then makes the worst decision he's probably made since the semi final in the FA Cup against Liverpool or Leicester <laughs> or any other game. And uh, it it's the underside of bar comes down. It's mm. cigars and it rolls in the corner. And I could have hit him and gone yeah. away or whatever. So it was unfortunate from that aspect. But you make your own luck yeah. and Everton. Uh, and making their own bad luck yeah. week in week out. The the other the thing was no pressure on the ball. No, you know, and the, just going back to the first half, Alcaraz misses a good chance at yeah. nil nil. If that goes in, it's a different game. Atsu has been in good positions. Etu, McGeady, they all got in decent positions. Bessage had about thirty seven shots. Yeah, yeah. But the second half, we just seemed to after that Lukaku yeah. shot, we didn't. We just passed no. it around without going anywhere, and and the the second goal was the killer. And then Gibson gives the ball away, and it's it's three nil late on, and. It's all she wrote, and but that was another one, though. That was a he gave the ball away, yeah. and the game's tuned up. It's neither here nor there. We were out at that stage about 85 minutes, wasn't it? But it's a shot at the near post. I miss, am I keeping you awake here? <sighs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> thinking that sleepless night. I'm just thinking had, back and just going, Oh my god, a shot that wasn't brilliantly struck yeah. has beat him at the near post. And you just, it, I don't know about you, but I just every time they shoot now, I just expect it to be in the net. That's, I was amazed. He saved. Yeah. He made the a, a save from it, Sir Gordon Heather. Yeah. And I was stunned. It didn't. Yeah, go it was post. a good save. Credit to him there. A good save. But ju- just on those few players, are those players out of form or are those players done? Who the likes of Distan? The likes of Distan, the likes of Hibbert. I mean, is that is that now truly their time? Can, can you think... can you can you say after? The performances recently is just bad form, or do you say, "Listen, Hibbert, you didn't play last season. You've played one game this season. I th- we, you've pretty much confirmed what we already knew." And this, and with this time, you've got to look at it and say, "You've had a stinker at the beginning of the season, and not it's over, but st- now Stones and Jack Yell could have to be our number one." And like we said, like we said, you know, in the last video after the Palace game. Something different has to be done when there's when Coleman's not playing and it's not Stones getting dragged out. Yeah, I think the Hibbert one's really difficult because I think I think everyone accepts and I think probably Tony accepts he's there for other reasons now. He's not just there to put pressure on it. Like no, but he's not just there to get in the team. Is he? he's not as if he's banging on the tea lady. No, uh, look, he, he don't. He hasn't played, has he? So to go into a yeah. game when you haven't played is difficult. Yeah. To play with no protection in front of you. Is even worse to play with this Dan and Alcaraz yeah. and Tim Howard out of form. Is even worse. So I think he can't fully shine a spotlight on Tony Everton and say he's the reason why we lost. He didn't have a good game last night, but he had no protection in front of him. Hibbert, this Dan now for me. It, people have given me the stats, and in the two games that Stones and Jack Elker have played 
we can see the one goal yeah. which was a 94th minute fantastic free, free kick, kick yeah. which no keeper would have saved the other games that we've beat that distance played in the least mm. we've conceded is two goals we've conceded yeah. two six three three it can't be a coincidence it can't be he's, I'm not saying he's done and dusted and that's the end of it but he's certainly not in any kind of form and mm. just because he's been good for us in the past yeah. he can't go well he'll get that form back it's it's Come to the end of September. And there's also the fact that it's his age now. Hmm. This probably will be his last season at the club and you just think to yourself, it's time to actually just... Move. I can't, I can't criticise Steven Gerrard and say his legs are gone at 34 and say, but still yeah. this stands fine. And, and that's age it, isn't it? catches up again. And you've got, and that's the point, then you've got to start saying, right, well, we've got to start looking at the, those alternatives. And that's why Browning at centre-half yeah. would have been a, a clever choice for me. Especially play. when two of the other three centre backs are in the thirties as well. Mm. So that I mean that's for me is a re- clearly the reason why I think for me John Stones is the number one now because Definitely. just simply because of his age and because you've got to build the team around him and when he's in the team we don't seem to concede as many goals. You know, he does have his bad moments but he doesn't he he, he he's going up. The others are coming down yeah. very, very sharply. Very and I think you know, this is a team that's not going to win the league. It might not even be a team that's going to finish in the top four. Everything seems to be, everything's against us to finish in the top four. So you've got to look at it and say, well, what are the actual risks of playing younger players? You know, so maybe it's, I think, maybe it's time. I think you've got to, there's got to be a point when you've got an aging back four like we have. There's a transitional point. Now, no one wants to throw their hand in at that transition and go, all right, well, we'll we'll settle for tenth this season and, and try and have a go because everyone people will be throwing things at you if you said you know you've gone from just missing out the Champions League to finishing tenth. So it's got to be done when people aren't playing well. That's yeah. when you make it. If you're not, if you're gonna, if you're gonna maintain that you're trying to finish in the top four and trying to be as good as you can be, you're never gonna start making changes when the team's doing well. But how else are you gonna see these young lads? So now's the time. Players are out of form. You know, I think that the, we all know that Coleman, Jagielka, Stones, and Baines are our back. That's our back four, and that should be our back four for every game that we play now until the Europa League's done and dusted in terms of we're through already. Yeah. Until we're in the FA Cup or out the FA, they've got to play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Thursday. It's got to be them because the only way it's, they're yeah. going to get any confidence. The only way they're going to get any confidence in him behind them because he's not going to get dropped yeah. for the moment. So you've got to work as a unit and without your defence, you're nothing yeah, because yeah. we're not quick enough and in the I, final third. I've, we all fully understand that the, the squad needs to be rotated and changed, whether that be tactically or because of fatigue. But he just seems to have got it wrong, Roberto Manners, in the last two or three games. He just seems to have put the wrong players in at the wrong places at the wrong time. And I think that I was looking at last night and just... Thinking, you've 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 balls this up. You've made a complete cock up of this. You've you've gone in there with a with a scratch team, and you've left out really important players against Crystal Palace. And that to me, I, I couldn't quite get my head around. I mean, the likes of Morales. Is, does he really need a nine day break between Wolfsburg and you know and Liverpool? Okay, you come on for the second half against Palace, but does he really need that kind of time? I've only I, done half an hour on Sunday. I know what I'm saying though, does he really need that kind of, does he really need No. Sure at this stage of the season, if if it called for it, he could have played he could have played those games, no problem. He could have played he should have played against Palace and right. then he could have had a week off. Yeah. And that last night, if we'd have beat Palace, I think everyone would have gone last night, okay, we've gone out, frustrating, mm. disappointing as it is. But we've seen Brian Oviedo yeah. do sixty five minutes yeah. or seventy minutes, whatever he's done. We've seen Luke Garber, who I thought was excellent yeah. to be fair, put a couple of tremendous deliveries into the box. I thought he'd done okay. Darren Gibson's got yeah. through a game. So Bessis so was alright as well. was quite good. So therefore, when you look at that, that was all positive. Yeah. I thought that two in bits looked really good, and other times he still looks really naive. And but again, he's two games mm. in. He's got to grow in. So there is positive to take yeah. out of it, which. He rightly highlighted after the game, yeah. Martinez. That's right, but do you, do whether you like that kind of thing or not. Well, yeah, I mean, I think look, I think we all we were all hurting last night, and I think sometimes you want him to come out and just say that wasn't good enough. Mm-hmm. It's great we had some plus points, but as a team performance, it wasn't good yeah. enough for Everton, and we'll correct that. That's some. He doesn't have to say that all the time. I love his positivity yeah. because it does make you go. He knows what he's doing. We're all terrified with the Wigan mm-hmm. stats that he never corrected the defence. Okay, but. 
we've got to give him the benefits of yeah. that and think he knows he will get it right. He's not stupid. We were fantastic last season, but there is changes that need to be made now. And it's about it's yeah. about the likes of Hibbert, Osman, Distan, Alcaraz knowing their place now in the yeah. squad. And for me, their places. But hoping Roberto sure. Martinez knows where their place is. I think though. he does. But again, like I said to you, you've got players on the books. If you were a 34 year old Everton player getting paid and there's a Carling Cup game, you'd expect to play because you know you're not going to play in the Premier League. You know you're probably not going to play in the Europa League at the moment. So that's your game. This is this is why I can't get my head around why Joel didn't play. Yeah. So and you know there's whispers going round. He's actually going to start in the derby. So you just started the whispers. No, I didn't. It's just a couple of things. Oh, right? Just now. seeing that team last night, yeah. you go. Do you think he played them because he maybe thought Tim Howard might have come to him and said, "Listen, I want to play in this game." Maybe, right? maybe, maybe, but it backfired Back because we've lost time. another game Back and he's led another time. three. In. Right, you are watching Toffee TV. We have been discussing Swansea City. Three Everton nil, which the first time they've ever beat us. Uh, At least that's out the way. That, that's out the way. Don't forget, comments on YouTube. There'll be a little subscription button up here. Click on that if you haven't already subscribed. Catch us on Twitter at Toffee TV One from Baz and from me Ped. We'll see you next time.